In this video, we're going to tackle some more difficult limit questions. So in this question, I'm asking you to find a number a such that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 3x squared plus ax plus a plus 3 all over x squared plus x minus 2 exists. And then I want you to find the limit. So we need to find values here that make this limit exist. So what does that mean? Either we need to have a constant over a constant or a zero over a zero. So let's see what this x squared plus x minus two tends to. So if we plug in negative two for x squared plus x minus two, we're gonna get negative two squared, which is four, plus negative two, which is minus two, then minus two. So this denominator tends to zero, which means we have to make this numerator also tend to zero. So we need to solve three x squared plus ax plus a plus three is equal to zero, but more specifically, the limit as x approaches negative two of three x squared plus ax plus a plus three is equal to zero. So we plug in negative two for our x's here. So we're going to get three times negative two squared, which is four, plus a times negative two. This will be minus two a plus a plus three is equal to zero. So if we simplify this, we're going to get 15 minus a is equal to zero. So we're going to have a equal to 15. Okay, so if a is equal to 15, then we can make the limit as x goes to negative two equal to zero on top. Okay, so uh, let's put this over on the side and then let's continue. Okay, so now we have our a values. So we have the limit as x goes to negative two of 3x squared plus 15x, and this will be plus 15 plus 3, so plus 18, all over x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so let's keep going. We want the limit as x goes to negative 2 of, well, we can factor out a 3 on top, so we're left with 3 times x squared plus 5x plus 6, which we can factor this nicely right now. This is just going to be x plus 3 times x plus 2. So let's do that. x plus 3 times x plus 2. And then x squared plus x minus 2. Well, that's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay. So now we can cancel the x plus 2s. So we have the limit as x goes to negative 2 of 3 times x plus 3 over x minus 1. Now if we plug negative 2 in there, we're going to get 3 times 1 over, well negative 2 minus 1 is just negative 3, so our limit is going to be equal to negative 1. So if we have a equals 15, the limit exists, and then more specifically, the limit is negative 1. Okay, that's the first question. Second question, not necessarily as tricky, we just want to show that for any polynomial p of x, we want to show that the limit as x approaches a of p of x is equal to p a. Okay, so how do we write a polynomial? Well, a polynomial p of x takes the form of some constant a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, on and on until we get to the nth term or the last term, a n times x to the n. Okay, so if we take the limit as x goes to a, what this means is that we just substitute in the value of x for a. Okay, so this will be a0 plus a1 times a plus a2 times a squared all the way up to a n times a to the n. Okay, and we can see that this is just the same thing as the polynomial p of x with a's where all the x's are. So this is the same thing as just replacing the variable x with a, so this is equal to p of a. I know you're thinking, what a stupid question, right? Well, not really. In fact, if you get used to doing these kind of things, when you hit courses like linear algebra or abstract algebra or real analysis, 
uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to ease into that if you think of things like this. You know, this may have been kind of a pointless step. We know that replacing x with a is going to give us p of a, but, well, you never know. In fact, what property do we need to know with this? Well, we need to know that all polynomials are continuous. So, because it's continuous, we can make this claim. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do the best that I can to answer them.